Liz Cambage vs. Jenna O'Hay. What caused this controversy to come alive again? Let's do a deep dive on why what occurred when the Australian Opals scrimmaged the Nigerian team finally came out. To do this, we'll need to look at the background of Jenna O'Hay, as what she's been through professionally and personally is what has likely compelled her to speak out regarding Cambage. Before we start, if you enjoy this video, it would be appreciated if you could give it a like and subscribe to the channel as that allows me to produce more content. All right, let's first start by briefly reviewing what occurred. For the last nine months, the only thing made public was that an altercation had occurred during the scrimmage. Rumors circulated that something really bad was said by Cambage. Basketball Australia did an investigation which did not shed any light or result in any punishment except for a formal reprimand being issued to Cambage. It was thought that BA did this as they hoped she might play for the Opals in the Basketball World Cup, which will be held in Sydney, Australia in 2022. However, soon after the formal reprimand, Cambage came out and said she had zero interest in playing for the Opals in the World Cup. Now, I expected after that statement that Basketball Australia would start leaking information regarding what occurred during the scrimmage and her behavior while she was in the Opals pre-Olympic training camp. Much like how the Boston Red Sox do when they either lose a player to free agency or they fire a manager. Let the smear campaign commence through anonymous sources. However, to BA's credit, and let me be clear, it is rare that you can give BA credit. But with this, they took the high road as they kept it quiet regarding what happened at the Nigerian scrimmage. There were rumors about what happened, but no one, not even Andrew Bogut, Liz Cambage's nemesis, was willing to go on the record and say what happened. Bogut just said it was bad what Cambage said, and it should not be excused based on her mental health. So it was never confirmed what was said. It was like everyone was gun-shy regarding saying what occurred due to concerns about Cambage's mental health and going on the record, which could potentially cause a media storm and result in a further deterioration of her mental health. <laughs> now, this is a reasonable position. As listen to Cambage talk about how her mental health was impacted by the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. End of 2016, I ended up on suicide watch after the Rio Olympics. However, in late April 2022, Jenna O'Hay, the Opal's team captain at the 2020 Olympics, went on This Is Your Journey podcast and spoke about Cambage and how her situation had impacted her. Prior to listening to her comments on the podcast, you'll get a better understanding if you know more about Jenna O'Hay. Let's start by taking a look at her playing career. She made the Olympic squad for the first time in 2012, and it was anticipated that she would be an automatic Opal selection for years to come. But the coach that took over in 2012 did not like her game, and she was left out of the squad until 2018. O'Hay had pretty much given up on playing for the Opals and was surprised when she made the World Cup squad in 2018, which went on to win the silver medal. She was further surprised when Sandy Brondello named her the team captain in 2019 prior to the Olympics after Belinda Snell had retired. She was excited to lead the Opals to the Olympics, but then this was delayed until 2021 due to COVID, and she was in Melbourne, which had frequent lockdowns. However, she took advantage of the lockdowns in 2020 to get healthy as she knew this was going to be her last Olympics, and she hoped that she'd be able to make it to the World Cup in 2022 and then retire. However, the Opals Olympic campaign was destroyed even before it started when Cambage withdrew just prior to the start of the Games. So keep this in mind when she gives you the following answer to the question of if she had made peace with the Liz Cambid situation and be able to process it and move on. Just with, we won't dwell on this, but just with Liz Cambage, given the significance of the player, the significance of the timing and, and what took place, I'm not sure if this is something that you've um, had to make peace with in terms of the process and what eventuated. I mean, there's only so much you can control as an individual, but how does that particular incident li live on with you now? Have you been able to process that and, and move on? Uh, absolutely not. Um, <laughs> that was That was huge. Um, and everything that surrounded it was really big. Um, to be honest, uh, I saw a sports psych for months afterwards um, mm. trying to deal with it all, and I do think that that's part of the reason why I have retired, um, that it, it took a huge toll on me um, and was really difficult. And, yeah, I'm still – I don't think I'll ever fully process it, to be honest. Um, it's still pretty raw. I don't really mm. talk about it very often unless it's with my sports psych. Yeah. Um, and he's put things in place for me to now be able to talk about it. If you asked me a couple of months ago, I would have been in a ball of tears, um, just not being able to process or 
um, really even think about it. So I, it's, it's going to take time for me um, and everyone heals at a different rate and gets over things in a different way. Um, so that's something that I'm still dealing with today. And it's, yeah, I think it's going to take a lot more time. Kim Beige spoke to the ABC in early May 2022, and she came out with some passive-aggressive comments regarding how happy she currently was as she was so well-supported by her new team, the Sparks, and how she never experienced that while with the Opals. Now, it's unclear if this was in response to the comments that Jenny O'Hay made, but it's clear that Kim Beige was unhappy with the national team and wanted to throw some shade. Take a look at the interview. On a level that the Opals or the Australian team never gave to me, my heart lies with those who want to protect me and those who want me to be the best I can be. Um, and I never felt that in the Opals at all. Once this occurred, then the gloves came off. Again, to give context, you need to take a look at O'Hay's background. As she had managed some personal tragedy as her uncle Ferg had unexpectedly committed suicide in late 2008. She was initially ashamed about this and did not tell her WNBL club while she was away only that she was dealing with a family matter. However, after doing some research, she realized what a problem depression and suicide were and felt compelled to do something. She decided to speak out on mental health and went to her WNBL club, The Boomers, with an idea to raise money for Lifeline based on how many three-pointers the team made during a game. This idea gained momentum and resulted in the WNBL Lifeline round, which was played in the last round of the season. For every three-point shot that was scored, each club donated $100, and the WNBL matched that final number. This wound up raising over $14,000 for Lifeline Australia. Following this, O'Hay joined the Lifeline Community Custodians Program, where athletes promote mental health. She and 21 other athletes shared their own personal stories at community events around the country. She spoke about how she was emotionally exhausted by the end of the tour, but explained how rewarding it was when a man came up to her at one of the rural community events and told her how he was going to seek help as he had been struggling and did not know that there was help available. So you can imagine how betrayed O'Hay felt when Cambage insinuated that she had not been supported while with the Opals. At that point, I think O'Hay decided it was time to stop hiding Cambage's behavior. O'Hay went on the TV show The Offsiders and pointed out that she had always tried to support Cambage. She then confirmed what Cambage said during the scrimmage with the Nigerian team and how that had made the Olympics so difficult. Take a look at the segment. So she says she never felt supported in the team that you led. How do you respond to that? I can hold my head up high and say that I always loved her, always cared for her, always supported her, always had her back. Uh, I think that is her reality. And I think the listeners and watchers out there can believe who they want to believe. Uh, but yeah, I can hold my head up high. And, and this all started in that um, training game or the, the pre-Olympics game when you played Nigeria. And, and it's never really emerged what happened, but I've had it confirmed from a few sources. Is it correct that they were playing Nigeria and Liz Cambridge was had her feathers ruffled and she turned to them and said, go back to your third world country. And of course, Ezi Maggabor is, uh, is originally Nigerian, a Nigerian who's now living in Australia and playing for your team. And as a re result, there was a brawl that erupted. And since then, you haven't spoken to her. That is all 100% correct. Will she ever play for Australia again, do you think? No. After O'Hay went on the offsiders, other Australian players felt free to call out Cambage's behavior. Not surprisingly, Bogut came out commenting on Cambage's go back to your third world country comment by saying, you just got the PG version. There was much more than that. I'm just glad someone's come out and said it. However, more surprising was a mild-mannered Andrew Gaze, Australian basketball legend, came out and was clearly irritated when he said, above and beyond, the thing that really, really grates at me is when she makes the comments to say she feels supported in Los Angeles at a level that she wasn't there with the Australian team and the suggestion that she was never supported by Australia and the Opals or Basketball Australia. That's highly offensive. Gaze went on to say there was some behavior that Liz had that under any reasonable judgment there would have been some significant repercussions. She was supported, not just by me, but by others along the way. To say that she wasn't supported is unfair. It's grossly unfair. But the bottom line she made some decisions that didn't support her teammates. Yet despite that, her teammates supported her during that time. Now, Cam Beige was not going to let this lie and tweeted after O'Hay went on Offsiders, the truth will always come to light and it ain't even dawn yet. So the question is, will more come out? And what will the dawn reveal? As well, will her new wonderful teammates be supportive as the sun comes up? Especially Nakaya and Shanae Agumake, 
who, unlike Cambridge, are proudly Nigerian and want to play for the so-called S third world country that they came from at the Olympics in 2024. It'll be interesting to see if they address Campage's comments regarding Nigeria during the season. Anyway, thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Could you please give it a like if you've watched this far as well? It'd be extremely helpful if you could subscribe to the channel and will allow me to generate more content. Thanks so much for watching.